Report Radio here on this Thursday evening, where in the latter half of the broadcast, it turns into Food World Order with our good friend James Evan Pilato of foodworldorder.com. And yes, let's do a 180 from what we've been talking about so far in the program. And let's take a look at the world of food, health and environment issues and what a wacky world it is. So it's great to have a resource like foodworldorder.com where we can keep abreast of all the latest. So, uh, James, thanks once again for coming on the program. Thanks a lot, man. I, I was just going to say, we have shifted quite wildly. I was, Why couldn't I get the Miles Davis intro? I got the, <laughs> the I get the Johnny Sorry Cash bummer. I'll, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a, it's a different every week, and it's and it's great to be back with you every week, and I and I appreciate this. I, I think some of the things on foodworldorder.com lately and especially the first story we're going to hit really covers a lot of the bases and i think it shows how intimately connected you know the food environment health issue is to everything else north korea to freeze nuclear work us to give food aid and james we had probably discussed this in the weeks and months back when kim jong il at least officially died and it was handed over to his son and it was talked Eric about was retired a, yeah. exactly so yeah no matter what happened and and that can be my my one comment about andrew breitbart that at this point regardless of what happened they're being yeah removed we talked about the the relations between the u.s and north korea going on around that time and there were intimations that there was some kind of food aid deal kind of hanging in the balance so north korea announced wednesday and that was the leap day february 29th that it would suspend its nuclear weapons tests and uranium enrichment and allow international inspectors to monitor activities at its main nuclear complex. The surprise announcement raised the possibility of ending a diplomatic impasse that has allowed the country's nuclear program to continue for years without international oversight. The Obama administration called the steps important, if limited. But the announcement seemed to signal that North Korea's new leader, Kim Jong-un, is at least willing to consider a return to negotiations and to engage with the U.S., which pledged in exchange to ship tons of food aid to the isolated, impoverished nation. So a freeze on nuclear activity, if it holds, could significantly ease anxieties over North Korea's behavior at a time when the Obama administration, in an election year, is focused on halting Iran's nuclear program and reducing the possibility that Israel could attack Iran. The last significant effort to negotiate a dismantling of North Korea's nuclear weapons collapsed in the waning weeks of George W. Bush's presidency more than three years ago. Now, James, you see why I'm going through this this kind of main chunk of the article, because it does kind of contain all our all our cast of characters and our current storylines at play here is again we, you know it's it's we they call it theater of operations for a reason it is the greatest show on earth the united states and other nations have been watching closely to see whether mr kim's rise to power late last year after the death of his father kim jong il would result in a change in north korean behavior the signals have been mixed only days ago, Mr. Kim delivered a bellicose speech suggesting that he could resort to military actions against South Korea as he consolidated his power, as there were U.S. and South military drills going on. North Korea also agreed to a moratorium on test launchings of long-range missiles, which have in the past inflamed tensions in the region. But joint statements by the State Department and North Korea's official news agency gave no indication of when substantive negotiations over the country's nuclear program involving the United States and North Korea, along with Russia, China, Japan, and South Korea, might begin again. And I do have an extra video in there and links to other stories that surround all of this and there's going to be an envoy visiting the u.s and of course israel didn't miss the opportunity to say this in no way mirrors the situation that we're in with iran and james again all, all the issues and all the stories and all the cast of characters are there and it's basically food as a weapon it's the carrot and the stick what do you think? Well, that's exactly right. And it's a dictum that I've uh, brought up before on this broadcast, control the food, control the people, attributed to Henry Kissinger. And there's no better example of that than basically holding a nation and the uh, the children and the women of a nation hostage but with this type of food aid politics. Uh, and it's the most disgusting playing with human lives. And at least some of that can be garnered from a digitaljournal.com article from January of this year. Are U.S. food aid politics starving North Korean children? Mm. 
And again, this isn't something new. This is something that's been going on and talked about for years and years. I've talked about it in my podcast before. I had a, a, an episode on food as a weapon. So we've seen this before. And unfortunately, as always, in so many of these big geopolitical wranglings, it's the uh, the average person and the average child there in North Korea that ends up suffering because of their insane dictator leaders and our insane dictator leaders uh, getting into their little you know stage show matches. So I, I think this will be interesting to see what, you know, what kind of goes on because North Korea has essentially kind of been on the back burner, I guess, as it were, as we've tended to focus on the sort of Middle East, Arab Spring kind of situations. And all the while now the, all the cries, you know, growing for, you know, why isn't the world intervening in Syria? So it's just it's fascinating on all these levels as you see situations that you know, are at various levels of, of chaos and, of course, by design chaos, but why attention is given to some and not the other, and it all comes down ultimately to probably media control. But we, James, I think last week we discussed a little bit of Syria, and I'm not sure if we also discussed any Fukushima situations, but in addition to the North Korea to freeze nuclear work, U.S. to give food aid post, I do also have one concerning Fukushima from Reuters about the crisis going much further than Fukushima. But do you have any last uh, uh, thoughts on the Korean situation before we start serving up some witchcraft? Let's just move right (laughs) along to the witchcraft. And again, this is another interesting one. So I I found these two different stories, one from DNA.info and, or rather DNAinfo.com, and one from the Faith World blog. And the first one, New York Public Library starts serving up witchcraft. So that's apostrophe W-I-C-H, craft. The New York Public Library is teaming up with food vendor witchcraft, as in sand witchcraft. Clever play on words. Exactly. (laughs) <laughs> and and I could have posted this on the on the occult site on Holy Hexes as well. The New York Public Library is teaming up with food vendor Witchcraft, and and I give you the link witchcraftnyc.com to offer snacks and drinks to readers inside the Fifth Avenue main branch of the New York Public Library for the first time in its 117 year history. Under this partnership. Witchcraft will operate two carts serving handmade sandwiches, coffee, and other refreshments inside the famed Stephen A. Schwartzman building beginning today, March 1st. And the rest of the story just kind of grabs quotes from from folks saying, it's a great idea, museums do it, I'll definitely take advantage. You can knock off two birds with one stone, research, read, and eat, and that's three. How many birds is that? Exactly. That's uh, three <laughs> things there, I think. He, he can, but he'll have time to work on that. It'll be nice to grab a book off the shelf and eat. Wonderful opportunity, blah, blah, blah. And one of the, you know, the the cons says, I don't want it smelling like food. There are tables out front if you want to eat. Keep it on the streets. This first, James, reminded me, as so many things do, outside the Springfield Library on some episode of The Simpsons, there's a big banner that says, we have books about TV as a way to just trying to get people to come into the library. I'm not sure what to kind of think of a story like this without maybe adding it to the other one, James. So let me throw the other one and I'll and I'll tell you what my what I've put together here from the Faith World blog church turned restaurant leaves diners in a state of grace. And I'll spare you most of the flowery prose, but essentially in Portland, Maine, on the other half of the country, a couple bought a rundown, of course, blown out property in the econo crash housing crash era bought it for six hundred seventy five thousand dollars did a two plus million dollar renovation and turned this former united methodist church into a new temple of high-end dining as the article says and if you see the photos it's it's amazing i would look at them and go you know I'd, i'd go there oh my god but what i find fascinating about the both of these stories is that we're bringing food into the places that maybe on some level are as part of those kind of crumbling institutions, public religion or institutional education and those kind of things. And it's ultimately maybe just coming down to, we just need to eat better <laughs> and we won't have to worry about our gods killing other people's gods or, or any of those kind of occult knowledge or any of those kind of situations. So I, I guess I just find it funny that 
on the one hand, the econo crash and people want to drag on and bring on food to try and wring any kind of profit out of, out of anything. But I think it could almost be some kind of fundamental change. What do you think? I, I don't know, but I do find it interesting the various religious uh, contexts and undertones in these stories and witchcraft and churches and things. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I just I think that's interesting in some way, but nothing I can precisely put my finger on. I guess I just it's I, I feel like it's a hopeful thing in a way that, as you know, as we've said so many times that, you know, food comes down and the health comes down and the environment comes down to be in kind of those essential kind of issues because, you know, you can't fight the information war you can't you know keep doing all of these things in this amazing world if you feel like crap and if you've been made to feel like crap so perhaps in a way i just kind of thought of the the food infiltrating you know libraries and and old rundown churches as a positive thing and there was an occupy tie-in to this as i guess i sort of in in my head and just the kind of imagination saw it as you know food occupying churches and and libraries and things but this one didn't seem to really get the coverage as much as the february 29th kind of occupy protests did yesterday but the occupy and the environmental and other food justice organizations held a day of action on february 27th and it of course gets into the food systems the genetically modified organisms and Cargill and Pepsi and Philip Morris and the seeds and Monsanto and Walmart and all of those things and even links to an op-ed by Willie Nelson. But I didn't, I didn't hear anything about this and, and it seems like that doesn't get the attention. But again, when you're throwing rocks through bank buildings, as did happen here in Portland, that's going to get all the attention, isn't it, James? Exactly right. I mean, I look at Occupy exactly like Anonymous, where, again, I'm sure mm-hmm. there are great people who are genuinely doing great things under that Anonymous label, exactly like in the Occupy label. But it, it's a question of what's going to get the attention. And just as in the on- Anonymous example, where it's, uh, oh, my God, Anonymous hacked the FBI or whatever the uh, the scare quote of the week will be, will get all of the attention, whereas uh, anything else done under the name of Anonymous won't get any attention in the exact same way when Occupy does something valid that I, I'm completely behind, Occupy our food supply, that's pretty much the basic message of, of these Food World Order broadcasts mm-hmm. and what I've, uh, what I've been saying on this broadcast for some time now. But that's a great message. I'm 100% behind that. Get rid of the, uh, the corporate food system, the industrial food system, which has been poisoning us for so long. But, of course, that's not going to garner the headlines, as you say, as throwing rocks through windows. Oh, my God, Occupy is throwing walks, rocks through windows. And... And it's uh, it's all a, a question of who gets to shape the message, and that's why once again it it it's all related, isn't it? it all comes back down to food, or it comes to, down to the media, mm-hmm. or these uh, these bedrock I- issues. But then it, there it is: the the media gets to say what Occupy is or isn't, or they like to believe they do. But their uh, their waning listenership means that we don't have to listen to them, and uh, more and more people are tuning out in droves. So so it's important to highlight stories like this, uh-huh. which again I would have completely missed if it wasn't on FoodWorldOrder.com. I want to tie in one of the things you talked about, you know, just kind of bringing it back home, bringing it all home. I got in, or rather, it was one of those door hanging things on the apartment today. Something I talked about, James, when you let me guest host a couple of weeks ago, I talked about something called Organics to You. That's a local organic food delivery service and implored people to go look out and see if other kind of similar things maybe existed in their cities and towns. But I, I think a hopeful sign is that I got a you know a, an advertisement for another service f- doing this, uh, essentially the same thing, this one being a little more of a CSA. And again, I think that shows that it's, it's only growing. I, again, Portland may be ahead in some ways, but hopefully not. And hopefully other people can just look up, you know, getting you know, local in-season organic produce from, you know, all their their nearby places. Some of the other things, James, before we cram right into the binge and purge, there's a funny post, NASA seeks amateur astronauts to study space food, the dream job of going to Hawaii and eating astronaut food in the Hawaii space exploration analog and simulation to, you know, it can't be tang and you know dehydrated ice cream all the time in the <laughs> spaceman outfit. Unfortunately, <laughs> and there is a report from New York Daily News: fast food nutrition labeling confusing and ineffective. And there's a research 
from, I, I have it linked up here, oh, Columbia University School of Nursing. Calorie postings in chain restaurants in a low-income urban neighborhood, measuring practical utility and policy compliance. So that's a big, full mouthful. They're basically saying, in the ghetto, fast food places are lying to you because they're trying to take advantage of you, just like they're trying to destroy all the other people. There's different tricks for the different, you know, so-called, you know, stratus and strata of people because there's the same kind of trickery being pulled on the folks who shop in, you know, upscale, organic -y style grocery stores who think they've got it all figured out, but when they buy that thing, it's like, hey, you know that's owned by Smuckers or Kraft or Philip Morris. So it, it is difficult. But, James, are you ready? Are we coming up against the break? Do we? Should we even get into the binge and oh, purge we got yet? a couple of minutes. Let's start with the binge and purge. Okay, because there is a... Finish it up after the break. There is a bit in there, and it's, as we speak, it's at the top of foodworldorder.com right now, and the binge and purge is just a list of headlines. And, James, there is a lot in here, and we won't go into nearly any of it. We're going to highlight a few main points, but also want to point out that I have been trying to add in some of the more, you know, environmental kind of biological and even drug war kind of issues that I've typically been doing on Media Monarchy, and I think they kind of have a better contextual home on the Food World Order site. But enough shop talk. Food safety officials Monsanto ties spur petition for ouster. So Bloomberg is covering the story, but I also have a link to naturalnews.com. Help stop former Monsanto VP from attaining top position at the FDA. And, of course, we're talking about Michael Taylor. He, of course, doth protest too much and is saying that people are misunderstanding the work that he did as a lawyer for Monsanto and that in no way affects his ability to keep moving up and up and up and the Obama Messiah keeps pushing him along as, you know, change Louia. Let's put a guy from Monsanto with all of their connections and all of the things that we know about them to say, oh, he, oh, he'll be great. It's a revolving door. And that's just like the photo that I attached to this showing Monsanto, King and Spalding being the law firm, one of those places none of us have ever really heard of and we're not supposed to, and the FDA. So there is a petition going, and this does seem to be getting attention, and it should call attention to the phony left-right paradigm for folks. I wish. Yeah, well, don't <laughs> hold your breath. But on that note, we are running up against the break, so we'll take a short break. We also have a caller on the line, so we'll mm -hmm. go to him after the break as well and finish up with the binge and purge from foodworldorder.com. So stay tuned right there. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the final minutes of Corbett Report Radio here on this Thursday night edition of the broadcast. And we have James Evan Pilato of foodworldorder.com on the line for our regular Food World Order updates. But we also have Mike from Kentucky waiting patiently on the phone lines. So let's go to Mike. Uh, thank you so much for the phone call. And what's on your mind tonight? Mike, are you there? Mike, first to Mike. He's not okay, Mike can't hear us at the moment, so we'll just continue going over the Food World Order updates with James, and we're going through the, uh, the binge and purge. <laughs> so, James, what's next up on that list? <laughs> what well, sounds like heavy breathing, but <laughs> Syria crops sheltered in Arctic doomsday vault. Because of the situation in Syria, they've made a big move to stash a bunch of seeds in the Svalbard doomsday seed vault, James. And I grabbed the story from Cryptagon, and it sources back to the Associated Press. The latest additions mean that the Svalbard Global Seed Vault, a master backup to the world's other seed banks, has now secured more than 740,000 samples since it opened in a remote Norwegian archipelago in 2008. Any thoughts on that? Uh, this is one that uh, immediately caught my attention. I thought it was really interesting. I mean, obviously, Syria has been next on the chopping block for a long time, and it's just uh, very, very interesting to see the elites moving to uh, to make sure that they've got all the, uh, the prized possessions for the uh, the coming New World genetically modified order. 
where uh, where they want to make sure that they have everything up in their little seed vault up up in Svalbard. Mm-hmm. So I'm um, absolutely fascinating to me. I, the Svalbard's doomsday vault thing is just something that, that constantly fascinates me, and I, there just isn't enough information about it, and not enough people drawing attention to it. So when I see things, little bits and nuggets mm-hmm. pop up about this, it, I mean, it's always just interesting. So on the binge and purge, there are other stories about a California food truck ban. And actually, did did you play the Smiths there a second ago for my that benefit? That was the Smiths. Yeah. Thank, well, was that for my benefit, or is that random chance? Random chance. The Smiths. Random chance. Andy Rourke to DJ at the Choice Eats Festival in New York. Former member of the Smiths. But more importantly, James. BP seeks settlement with oil spill plaintiffs. There was a delay in the trial against BP, and it's scheduled to start on March 5th here in just four days from now. But BP is pushing hard to try and get everybody to settle so they can shut the hell up and go away, and this story can go away. We've also got updates on the wild weather, killing at least 13 here in the States. James, a 5.3 magnitude and a 4.8 hit Fukushima. I got that from enenews.com just two days ago. It continues to happen, and uh, we've seen a lot of earthquakes come in little mm-hmm. clusters like that, two mm-hmm. or three in a row. So uh, always worrying, because the reactors are still unstable, and the containments are extremely unstable. So we just uh, don't want to see another big one there. And we've, I think, seen clusters of earthquakes off Oregon coast as well as, you know, again, James, you and I are, you know, connected and separated by the Pacific Ocean. Great Pacific garbage patch to get hit with debris from Japanese tsunami. That's from the Washington Post, but from a small Oregon press, SeasideSignal.com, keeping an Oregon eye open for tsunami debris. It's, uh, it's coming. And it's just mm-hmm. a matter of when. There's been some indication that some of it's already arrived. There was uh-huh. some dispute about that. But anyways, it's on the way. So um, it's it's making its way. And uh, as we know, the, the Pacific has been vastly more polluted by, uh, by what happened at Fukushima than they've let on. But uh, on that note, I think we'll have to wrap things up for tonight. Once again, James of Palato, foodworldorder.com. Thank you so much for the updates. Thanks, man. All right, and to all of you out there, thank you so much for all of your support. Once again, CorbettReport.com slash support. You can sign up for the subscriber-only newsletter, get the subscriber-only video and news roundup and all of that, and a 25% discount on my brand new DVD. Until tomorrow night and Friday night highlights, thank you all for listening and take care. <laughs>